a map of the world created during the Islamic classical age. Chapter 14, the classical age. The big question, what was life like for Muslim during the Islamic classical age? In the 740s, fighting broke out again in the Islamic Empire. Shias, who still followed Ali, continued to rebel against the Umayyad Caliphate. This time, the Umayyads were defeated. Only one member of the family survived. He fled to Spain, where his family continued to rule under a new separate caliphate. In the rest of the Muslim world, a new dynasty emerged that of the Abbasids descended from another member of Muhammad's family, his uncle. The story of early Islam might sound like one of constant battles but it was actually very stable compared with what was occurring in Europe and elsewhere. The Abbasids ruled for 500 years, moving the capital from Damascus in Syria to Baghdad in modern-day Iraq. Under them, the Islamic Empire was very prosperous art, science, mathematics, and architecture flourished. This period is known as the Islam Classical Age. During the Classical Age, the Islamic world was much wealthier, more scientifically advanced than Europe. Jews, Christians, and Muslims coexisted in great cities. They lived in houses with courtyards and fountains and dined on subtly spiced foods. Their homes were filled with goods from across the empire and beyond. The classical age was possible because of the size of the Islam empire. Muslims were able to take ideas from different parts of the world and merge them into something completely new. Knowledge in the Classical Age The Abbasid Caliphate was a magnet for scholars throughout the empire. Regardless of their religion, Persians, Greeks, Indians and others flocked there. Baghdad became one of the greatest storehouses of knowledge in the world particularly of old Greek texts translated into Arabic, as well as translating ancient Greek and Roman manuscripts, circles of scholars worked together and debated one another. Logic and reasoning were an important part of Islam, and that extended to the field of science. With so much knowledge at their fingerprints, scholars made countless scientific, philosophical, mathematical, and other discoveries. These contributions were often years, decades, even centuries ahead of developments in other parts of the world. Developments during the Classical Age 1. A drawing explaining the different phases of the moon. 2. A physician learning a complex surgical method. And 3. A drawing of a mechanical device. Mosques. A mosque is the name for an Islamic place of worship, similar to synagogues for Jews and churches for Christians. Over the centuries, there have been many great mosques built throughout the Islamic Empire. Many share common characteristics. All mosques have a mirab or prayer niche pointed to Mecca. This is the direction in which Muslims pray. Many mosques have minarets or tall towers used to call people to prayer. 
calligraphy and geometric designs are both common features in mosques. 1. Grand Mosque in Abu Dhabi, the capital city of the United Arab Emirates. 2. An interior view of the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul. And 3. Islamic arches in Riyadh, Morocco. Architecture The Islamic world created some of the greatest architectural masterpieces of all time. Just as European Christians built great cathedrals and the Muslims built great mosques. The Muslims wanted their mosques to be beautiful, imposing and noticeable for, from afar. One of their greatest innovations was the pointed arch. A pointed arch is very graceful, but it also bears a lot of weight. You can build higher using one. Other arches the Muslims developed were used for beauty. The OG arch in the form of an S shape, for example, as well as arches, many mosques had great domes, like that of the dome of the rock mentioned in chapter 4. From within the mosque, people might have looked up in the huge dome and felt as though they were looking at heaven. The domes inspired awe in the worshippers. Geometric patterns were central to Muslim architecture, perhaps because some Muslims did not believe in representing Muhammad's face. Other decorative elements were emphasized. Artists inscribed squares or triangles inside circles and interlocked the figures into patterns that could be repeated near endlessly. These patterns were intended to remind their viewers of the infinite expanse of the universe. 1. An architectural drawing of Hagia Sophia. 2. A door of the Babadukala Mosque in Marrakech, Morocco. And 3. Islamic Thai work in Fez, Morocco. Another commonly used architectural pattern was the arabesque. If you were to go to a wealthy Muslim home, you might see courtyards with fountains and elaborate gardens. This created a sense of peace and tranquility. The arabesque was based on the observation of gardens with elaborate patterns of intertwined plant stems and a variety of leaves. These patterns reflected both the natural world and the gardens of heaven that Muslims believed God had created for them. The Great Mosque of Samarra The Great Mosque of Samarra was built by the Abbasid Caliphs in the 9th center. It is an enormous spiral minaret constructed entirely of baked brick, towered over the city. Hagia Sophia. The Hagia Sophia in Istanbul, Constantinople was originally a great church built by the Byzantine Emperor Justinian. When the Muslims conquered Constantinople, they converted the church into a mosque, covered the many frescoes of Jesus, Mary and Christian saints, and added minarets, calligraphy, and mirab. The Hagia Sophia is now maintained as a museum, inside of which you can see the combination of Christian and Islamic design. Mathematics. Have you ever tried doing math in Roman numerals? It is a nightmare because the Romans used combination of letters for numbers. For example, C represents 100, 
M represent a thousand and I represent I. So 578 equals DLXXVEEE. -E -E. A man called Muhammad Musa al Khwarizmi solved that problem. A great mathematician, he took some of the ideas that existed in India and refined them into our current numeral system 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. He introduced the number zero as well, which is a foundation of modern mathematics. Al Huarizmi made many other discoveries in algebra, in astronomy, and even in geography. His work spread to Western Europe, and his name in Latin led to the English term algorithm, which is a word we still use today. Without his work, many of the most important scientific discoveries of the past a thousand years probably would not have been possible. 1. Astronomical tables. 2. A mathematic table from an ancient manuscript. And 3. Muhammad ibn Musa al Khwarizmi. Medicine. Medieval Europeans did not know much about hygiene or medicine. Cities and homes were often dirty, people did not bathe often, and sickness and death were very common. The Islamic world was more advanced. Every city had many bath houses, and the streets and homes were much cleaner than in Europe. This prevented to spread the spread of illness and disease. The Muslims also made many discoveries in medicine. For example, a famous physician called Ibn Sina pioneered a method of setting broken bones that is still used today. His book, The Canon of Medicine, collected all of the most sophisticated medical knowledge of the day. It was used throughout the empire and traveled to Europe, where it helped Europeans advance their own understanding of medicine. Another Islamic physician, Abu al Qasim al Zahari, wrote the first illustrated book about surgery and invented several surgical instruments. He offered practical advice about skin care and hair care, strengthening gums and tooth whitening. He also discussed sunscreen, deodorants, an early form of lipstick, and ways of strengthening curly hair. Some discoveries that Europeans made during the Renaissance were only possible thanks to the translation of Arabic text and scientific knowledge into Latin. One, in drawing from an ancient Islam book of medicine. Two, a manuscript drawing showing the human eye. And three, an illustration of doctors preparing medicine. Food of the classical age. In the 10th century, a man living in Baghdad named Ibn Sayyar al rak compiled hundreds of recipes. The resulting book, translated from the Arabic as the Book of Dishes, survived and gave us a fascinating glimpse into eating habits in the Islamic classical age. A simple recipe, slice meat and chop it into small pieces, but not too small and add some sweet. Cook the meat with the green stalks of onion and curat and season the meat with salt, olive oil, bruised cassia and galago. Add coriander seeds and cumin. Break eggs on the meat. Let the eggs look like eyes. Place the 
pan with the meat and eggs on a reed tray and place a spring of roux in the middle of each yolk. Drape over the pan a big thin sheet of bread and present it to the table. 1. Traditional spice market from the Islamic culture. 2. Hello cooking at a Muslim gathering. And 3. An iftar, an evening meal for breaking daily fast during the Islamic month of Hamadan. The Great City of Baghdad. Baghdad, founded in 762, was the capital of the Abbasid Caliph was centrally located within the empire and was defended by thick mud brick walls and broad moat formed from the river Tigris. Four great gates facing different parts of the empire allowed people in and out of the city. Within the city, four huge streets were filled with shopping arcades where merchants sold spices, carpets, and everything else you can imagine. Sugarcane, dates, mangoes, and rice all traveled across the empire to be sold in the streets of Baghdad. Just inside the wall were houses for the caliph's family, staff, and servants. The caliph's themselves live in a palace in the city center, an enormous building. It had two reception halls with high domes, the highest standing 12 stories above ground. Atop this highest dome was a statue of a horseman carrying a lance. Visitors called the horseman the crown of Baghdad. It was said that if the lens moved, rebels would attack from where it pointed. Many members of the ordinary public live in the stone or brick houses or even in apartment buildings housing as many as 200. Communal bath houses with one for women and one for men were dotted throughout the city. 1. The city of Baghdad between 150 and 300 AH, 767 and 912 CE. 2. An illustrated scene from the siege of Baghdad. And 3. A musket tower in Baghdad.